tow balls and hitches like this have been known to fail in vehicle-based and four-wheel drive recoveries when these are used as an anchor point. In Australia in recent years at least five people have been killed by some of these components hitting them. So in this video I'm going to be explaining to you what's going on and what makes these so dangerous. Here at Mad Matt 4 Drive I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get those notifications. So let's just start with this situation. You're bogged and you've got a, a snatch strap. Now this isn't a snatch strap, this is just for demonstration purposes but they look just like this. And you think how do I hook onto a, my vehicle? I'll just hook on there onto the tow ball. That's an innocent enough way to think about it but it does introduce some real dangers and so we generally speaking will never recover off a tow ball. There are a few exceptional times where you may consider it and that would be say you've got a vehicle stuck on flat surface on ice and he's got to go one meter and you're not even really going to put any force in there you're going to hook a strap on and you might you know drag it off with five guys. Well, yes, yeah, sure, there's not much energy, but that would be about the only exception. For the most part, it's not worth using a tow ball to recover off or a hitch like this. Now, there's a principle that is in play here, which is really the heart of where the danger lies, and it's called single shear and double shear. So let's talk about this single shear. So single shear is what this tow ball is. It's got a mounting point here, and the load is put into that tow ball on one side of the mounting plate and therefore this point in here is essentially single shear. So when we put load on this it creates a fulcrum point here at the front of this housing or this um, part of the ball and a tension point around the actual center shaft of the tow ball. So it creates a lever. Now you might think that's massive bit of steel, no way it's going to break. Well, Ronnie Dahl has done some testing in his video, one of his videos, which is linked down below and in the description. Go and have a look at his video after you've finished watching this one, just saying. Um, go and watch his video, but he actually destroys a whole number of tow balls in different situations and throws them into the front of a car. And it is absolutely proof that recovering off a tow ball is dangerous. If that doesn't change your mind and doesn't get you on board with why this is dangerous, I'm not really sure what will, okay? So that is a single shear environment. We have one mounting point and then the load is off to the side of that mounting point. So let's show you the double shear situation. So a standard tow bar like this is double shear. So when that hitch receiver goes in there, and we put the pin through. The, on this side here and that side there, we have two shear points, hence double shear. And therefore that makes that connection a whole heap stronger, massively stronger, because we, to, for that to fail, we literally have to use this to slice both sides of that pin clean through. That's why it's a really strong connection method. So, have a think about that. I hope that makes it clear. If any of you guys are engineering types, and I bet a bunch of you are, you know what I'd love you to do is link to some engineering literature in the comments down below so that people can read up and study this a bit deeper. I'd really appreciate it if you could do that for us. Right, we'll put that away. Obviously, you're not going to leave that in there. I just chucked it there because it was somewhere easy while I was talking. Now, I've had a people ask me over the years, hey Matt, why can't I use a rated bow shackle through the hole in my receiver? So take the tow ball out and put that into there. Why, why would that be bad? Well, let me explain to you why. So you imagine we've got our strap hooked up to our bow shackle through that hole. So the energy, when we introduce the energy, comes in and now it's got to, the energy's got to transfer up to the pin up here at our double shear point. So it's not a straight line pull, it's got to travel, this is the energy, because energy is always going to travel in a straight line. So that's roughly how the energy is going to travel, like the ruler is showing us there. Now I want to highlight to you this point just here. Right here. So all of this energy from a recovery, it's coming through and it's got to transfer from this plate into that place, plate there or that tube. 
and there's something called a stress riser is created. And that stress riser is created through the root of this well here. And it's because that is in the centre line of the energy transfer. So what that means is this weld is now in tension as opposed to compression. Anything in compression is generally going to be stronger than something in tension. Now when, when this is designed to do its job of towing a trailer, it is plenty strong enough. But in a vehicle recovery situation, we can introduce forces to this that it was never designed for. Now when these are brand new, they, you might get away with it for a few times. But recently in Australia, we've had two circumstances I know of where this component, this weld has failed and people have been hit in the head and one guy was killed in Tasmania and another guy local to me, he survived fortunately, but he's not quite uh, the same unfortunately, which is very sad because this lump of metal flew at him. So this, this weld being in tension where we create a stress rise because of the forces coming through there is where this weld is going to start to fail. Now, the guy in Tasmania who was killed by this, what the coroner found was that down inside here had been subjected to salt water over many years and the four millimetre parent material had corroded down to an effective one and a half, two millimetres of material. So it was significantly weaker. Now it might have looked fine to the outside eye looking like this, but you can't see the condition of that weld. So when they've done their recovery, this weld has failed and it's torn up through this weld until this component here has come apart from the tube and that has now become a projectile and killed this gentleman. And so that's why in a recovery, I pretty much say the words never would you use a hitch receiver or a tow ball in a recovery because they're not designed for it and people are dying for, from it. But hopefully I've been able to explain to you what makes them so dangerous. Now I think there's an assumption out there in some of the four wheel drive community that it's rated bow shackles which are failing. And that's not correct. For the, these, are, these are not what we're seeing fail. If you've got a rated bow shackle like this one, which has got a working load limit of four and three quarter ton, that means it's been tested and designed to withstand over 23 tons before it would fail. So way more than we're gonna see in the average four wheel drive recovery. These are not what's failing. These become a projectile in a failed recovery when they're attached to a vehicle point that's not suitable for a vehicle recovery. So there could be a number of uh, points. There could be vehicle tie down points, especially on a front of a vehicle. And these are just designed for shipping and transport of a vehicle. It could be a point like this where a safety chain is designed to hook onto a tow bar for towing your trailer. And there's a nice big hole there. So you think, yeah, I'll chuck that through there. That'll be all right. Well, these will, these will fail on you. It could be tow balls and hitch receivers like we've already talked about but it's not tending to be a bow shackle. Now, if I was attached to this inappropriately and this failed, now if this is attached to my snatch strap, this is now a danger because it's like a bullet on a snatch strap flying through the air towards the other vehicle. That's where they do become dangerous. And that's where something like a soft shackle can be an advantage. It is lighter. Now in a, fa a, a failure, these are both going to have the same amount of potential energy, therefore they're going to both be able to do a whole heap of damage. Um, but if you want to find out more about exactly how that side of it works, well, mate of mine, Robert Pepper, he's done some excellent videos around the actual energies that are involved, like the numbers that are developed when these sort of components failed and so on. And I'll link some of those videos down below. Make sure you subscribe to his his channel if you're a bit of a numbers nerd and love knowing how much energy goes on because he's all over that stuff. I want to make another point here. So many of us in the full drive community and you know the guys at Factor 55 have made devices to fit into the standard um, two inch hitch receiver or 50 mil hitch receiver that we see on so many of our four wheel drives. Now these are not designed, there is one company, Heyman Reese I believe, who make a bar called the X, X bar, I think it's called, and it ha does have designed recovery points in it. But for, for the vast majority of us, we're just using the tow bar that's designed for towing on our vehicles. 
over thousands of vehicle recoveries, for the most part, we're not seeing these fail, assuming they're in good condition, bolted to the chassis with serviceable bolts and all of the normal stuff's in place. We're not seeing bending, we're not seeing failing. So through experience, we, we've sort of come to the conclusion that something like this is acceptable for a vehicle-based recovery, but it's not actually designed for it. What I'd just like to make one point, if you have a tow bar that doesn't really have this receiver, so it's not what we would call a heavy duty bar. I would suggest you be very, very cautious about doing a vehicle based recovery off that. So just be aware about that element when you consider attaching to the rear of your four wheel drive. It may be that you need to have another attachment point that's more suited to vehicle based recoveries than what's currently fitted to your vehicle. So do some investigations and make sure that however you attach is gonna be safe and strong enough to do the job. All right, I wanna ask you a question, or challenge you really, um, with, with this. So going back to the beginning, I said, you've got the situation where you're stuck and you go, we've gotta we've got get ourselves out. What are we gonna do? And you go, we'll hook onto the tow ball. Well, let me ask you this question. If I haven't convinced you that that's absolutely dangerous and crazy and, and you know, as I say, pretty much never use it, there's a, you know, if I haven't convinced you of that already, and you still think that's a good idea, let me ask you this. Pull a pin out, pull that out, if, you know, buy one of these, put the pin in, put the pin in the back there, and you've now got a safe recovery point that we know is gonna be safe for your family, for you, and nobody's gonna hurt. Are you really gonna keep that in there? Come on, I think we're better than that. I think we've uh, got enough data out there to prove that that's just not the way to do it. So what I'd love you to do is share this video so that your mates can know and learn. You know, if you've got a mate who's new to four wheel driving, make sure that they get to know about this or somebody who hasn't got a lot of experience yet, make sure that they see these videos so that they can learn as well. Now, some of the gear you've seen me using here, the Factor 55 hitch receiver, the soft shackles and all that, and a bunch of other stuff's all linked down below. And by you purchasing that gear, and um, that supports my channel and just helps me keep making these videos and helping us all wheel well. So I'd appreciate if you could support me as I support you. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails. So I've mentioned Hayman Reese a couple of times, but I just wanna make it really, really clear. Firstly, they're not sponsoring this video. They've got nothing to do with this video. And as far as I know, they've got nothing to do with people getting hurt by these, their equipment being used in recoveries. So I'm not implying anything negative towards Hayman Reese in any way, shape or form. It's just I've got one of their hitch receivers here because they make a whole heap of tow bars here in Australia.